Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Howard Pinsky, and I remembered that today to plug in my microphone. I hope you're all doing well on this Thursday afternoon or morning or evening or Friday morning for some of you. We have two days left in this round of challenges, and next week, Jesse's going to be back kicking off once again, another round. So hello everyone, we've got Docho and Dusan and Stephanie and Ruben and another Ruben. We've got two Rubens back to back, uh, Rochelle and Juan and Lena and Sam and Alex and Katarina and everyone else joining me today. Hope you're all staying safe. All right, let me know who you are, where are you tuning in from, throw it in the chat. We've got Jennifer and Etsy and everyone else. All right, so we have two days left. We're winding down and we're starting to get a little bit more advanced. We're really building out this dashboard. We're, we're really incorporating some interesting things. And today we're gonna talk all about masks. So hopping over to my screen, behance.net slash challenge slash XD. That's where you're gonna go for all the information about the Adobe XD daily creative challenge. If you haven't hit that big blue register button at the top yet, you still have time. Two days left, but you still have time. And again, another round is starting in just a few days. So if you're brand new and you're kind of getting prepared for the next round with Jesse, here's how things work. Every single day, you're gonna receive a challenge, at least Monday to Friday. And you can join us in our Discord community chat. I'm gonna hop over here and Sam every morning posts all the information about the daily challenge. You can submit your work in the current challenge channel. And some of you have been putting together really amazing looking dashboards, really cool stuff. You can ask questions about XD or design. You can share tips and tricks, whatever it might be. Just hop in Discord, there's about 40,000 designers in there. So it's a good time. Uh, we've got someone from Los Angeles and Massachusetts and Phoenix. Um, Akin is saying, I hope to see Howard with Masterclass after his DCC's end. Yes, tomorrow. I've got another masterclass. And last week's during math, during last week's math masterclass, I started to build out the redesign for the new Let's XD website, which is actually hiding in this tab right here. I've been coding out lately. And tomorrow we're gonna finish off the design and we're gonna push it live at some point. But yeah, it's hiding in here. I don't wanna give too much away, but it's in there. All right, so just to recap, and oh yeah, you should probably share your work as well. Also in Discord, but also um, uh, Behance, using the keyword XD Daily Challenge. All right, so to recap, we started off with plugins. We built out a navigation bar. We explored content-aware layout and how it can help us build call-to-action groups and buttons. Repeat grids, one of the, my favorite features in Adobe XD, to build out a top post section. Component states, guides, Anchor links, yesterday we took a look at adding audio effects using audio playback, one of the newer features in Adobe XD. And today we're gonna to be looking at how to use masks along with auto animate to kind of hide some content inside of cards. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD. And this is where we left off. Let me hide my guide. So again, here's our navigation bar on the left. We've got our call to action at the top, which we used content aware layout to build. We've got our top post. We've got our chart, which we used component states to not only design, but also animate. We have our activity section, and then we have our recent post down at the bottom, which we used uh, anchor links to navigate to. And throughout this, we also used audio effects to add sound effects to the search and heart interactions. Now today, we're gonna add one more element and we are going to build out sort of like a stories feature. And if you're familiar with stories on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or any of those features, any of those services, I believe they're all called stories. Imagine that. You know, you, can, you know, in the little preview window, you can see just a little snippet of what that is. You might be able to see the person's face, like the user profile, maybe their name. And then when you click or tap on it, it expands. So you can see a lot more of it and more information comes into play. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna kind of create one down here. And what I'm gonna do, just so I have a bit of room, I'm gonna grab these elements here and just shift them down a touch, just so we have some room for that story element, which is gonna be put somewhere right about here. Now on Instagram, they're very circular. They're completely circular, actually. Where on Facebook, they're more of like a, a rectangle. So that's what, kind of what we're gonna go for. We're gonna take some inspiration from Facebook. And to do that, I'm going to grab my rectangle. Most things start out with a rectangle and draw one out just like this, right? 
and I can make sure if I wanted to that everything is spaced out nicely. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna round out the corners. Now we've been going with 28 pixels. Now I will note, let me just get to 28. I can also enter it manually over here. I will note that the smaller your elements get, the harder it is to maintain consistency. Because if this element, for example, was let's say this small, and we still have the 28 pixels over here to the right, depending on what's inside of the element, it may be difficult to put text because it might like hug the, the border, which you probably don't want. It looks a little bit strange. So we'll, we'll start with 28 pixels. We'll see how that looks. Thankfully, in just in the preview, we're just gonna basically put an image, a profile photo, and a name. So we might be okay with sticking with 24. All right, so here we go. Uh, Danish is saying, for some reason, my search changes its position after it expands. So there's a, there's a good chance what you did, Danish. Hopefully, I'm, pr I'm pronouncing your name correctly. But hopefully, what you, what, what you probably did is you probably had your default state and you had your expanded state. And instead of double clicking into the expanded state to select the individual elements, you may have selected the actual component and resized it that way. That will not work. You have to go in and resize the individual components. All right, so uh, Don is asking, what's the shortcut for space out with newly designed? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, write that question again. I'm not exactly sure what you mean, uh, but I'll take a look in a second. So we've got a rectangle here. And again, this is the preview for an image. So I'm going to hop over to Finder and I've got some images here, some people. I've also got some places that we might want to use. Let's go ahead and use this image over here. Looks pretty good. I'm going to drag this directly into my mask. It's going to automatically place it. And of course, this is a very basic mask, but in a moment, we're going to get a little bit more advanced. So we've got our image here and go ahead and name this just image. And we also might want a profile photo. So with my ellipse tool, I'm going to hold down my shift to constrain it to a perfect circle, draw one out just like that. I'll position it somewhere at the top left hand corner. I'm going to hop back over to Finder, grab an image, Let's go for, I don't know, this image looks pretty good. Pop that in there. I can double click to access the mask, scale this up a little bit and position her right about there. Now on the inside, just to kind of separate it from the image in the background, I may want to add a little bit of border. Now it does have a gray border by default. So I'm gonna just shift this over to white and maybe increase the size just a little bit. Hey Cody, welcome. Excited for your stream today. It was a wild ride yesterday. So we've got our profile photo looking pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and name this profile. There we go. Hey Thomas, welcome. Sounds like it might be your first time. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we've got our profile photo, we've got our image, and maybe we also want a little bit of a name. So I'm gonna grab my text tool and I'm going to type out, let's say, I don't know, her name might be Angela, possibly. I'm gonna make it larger by grabbing the little handle at the bottom and simply pulling up. And I'm gonna make sure for consistency purposes, let's go for Sophia Pro, we'll change this to white. And of course, depending on the image preview in the background, you may want a different color for the text or you may want to put a gradient of some sort at the bottom of this box, but I think this looks pretty good. All right, so Donna says, when drawing the rectangle and having the space gaps with other elements. So when I drew the rectangle, um, what I can do is because XD recognizes that the spacing here and here is kind of the same. When I move my, when I move that rectangle around, it automatically spaces it out. So I'm not too worried when I'm drawing the rectangle, but when I'm starting to position it, that's when I'm moving things around. And of course I could use guides or I could use a grid to make sure everything's spaced from the get-go, but I'm not too worried right away when I'm drawing it. Just, you know, place it later on. All right, so we've got th these elements looking pretty good, right? And again, this is a preview for the larger story. So the big question is, how do we create that larger story? Now, there's a few ways to do it. Of course, you can make separate artboards. And on this artboard, you can have the preview. And on a separate, another artboard, you would have the expanded view, right? But the problem with that is you would have to have a completely separate artboard just for that interaction, right? We don't want to do that. No one's about that life. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build into components. Now, here's the thing. Inside of a story, when you open it up, there's some additional elements that you may not necessarily want to see immediately. There might be um, an area so you can uh, leave a comment. There might be an area for to show you how many additional stories there are. 
There might be more information about the person's name. There might be a lot of different things, right? And we want to make sure that we're building this all into the initial component. So what I'm going to do is just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm actually going to grab some of these elements. So I might want to grab this section down here, the comment section with the little paper airplane sort of thing. I'm going to copy that and I'm simply going to paste it. I'm going to make sure to group it as well. I'll just name this comment. Now I'm going to want this to be part of that story. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave it somewhere right about here, right? You're probably asking, why am I leaving it there? It looks a little bit out of place. And it does right now. But in a moment, we're, we're going to hide all the elements that we don't want to see initially. And we're going to use a mask. So we've got that right, right there, right? And another thing we might want to add is an indicator of how many stories there might be. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to draw one out like this, right? This might be the active story. So I'm going to increase the border. Maybe I'll round out the caps and I'll change the color to white, right? Now we might want another one for an inactive story. So I'm going to, let's say, drop the opacity a little bit. Let's go for 50%. And I'll just grab, grab my move tool and let's do one more. Make sure everything snaps into place really nicely. And I can grab all these, make these a little bit larger if I wanted to. But I think that looks pretty good. So essentially we have one active story, the one that's playing, and then two additional stories that users will be able to watch. All right. So again, we don't want these to be displayed initially. So I'm going to kind of move them out here. And now the big question is, how do we mask all these additional elements inside of this particular preview? Here's what we're going to do. We are going to grab the image layer in the background and we're going to duplicate it. Command and Control D. And we're going to move that image layer on top of all the other layers that we want masked inside of it. Now, here's something to note, because you may run into this. I'm going to, I'm going to mess up on purpose. I'm going to go ahead and select the top layer, which we're going to use for our mask and all the layers underneath it that we want included inside of the mask, right? Now, under the object menu, you're going to notice there's a mask with shape option, but right now it's grayed out and you're probably wondering why is it great? Why can we not select it? And you might run into this. It's because the mask layer at the top, which we're going to use for the mask is already a mask essentially, because there's an image inside of it. So, you can't do that. So all you have to do is just change the color to whatever you want, right? And now, now that basically the image is gone, you can go ahead and select all those layers one more time. Under the object menu, go back down to mask with shape and now it's available. You can also use the command shift M shortcut key. Boop, there we go. And it's also good to note that if you're on Windows, because it doesn't have a menu bar at the top, you would right click on any of the elements and you'll be able to mask with shape from there as well. So what you'll notice, let me actually go back and then forward again. It's taken all the elements that were selected and masked them inside of that shape at the top, right? So all the ones that were kind of floating around to the right or to the bottom of this particular shape are now hidden because they're inside of that mask, which is exactly what we want. So now we're just left with this preview card. Akin says for a second, I thought it was dark mode. I wish, maybe one day. Good boop, thank you. So now we've got this preview, which I'm going to name, let's go ahead and name just story, right? And now we can go ahead and start building out the second state. And to do that, we need to convert it into a component. So I've got my story mask selected. Over here in my properties inspector, I can press the plus button to create a component. You can also do that in your assets panel. You can also press the command or control K shortcut. And that creates a master component as indicated by the filled in diamond at the top left. Now, because we already have our default state created, we can go ahead and design out the second one, which I'm going to name, let's say expanded, right? There we go. Now, at this point, kind of going back to what Danish was talking about earlier, if you were to simply start moving some of these things around, first of all, responsive resize needs to be tweaked a little bit. But if you were, if you were to move the entire or resize the entire component, you're going to notice it also affects sometimes the default state, which is what we do not want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure 
to dive into the component. So I'm gonna double click on it, just like that. And now I can start making changes. So I'm gonna make sure to select the mask and the image at the bottom. I can resize this up. I'm holding down my shift key to constrain it. There we go. I can move the comment box down to the bottom. Let's say I'll move Angela's name up here, right? And I can rearrange some of these if I wanted to. Just make sure these kind of fall into place just like that. Maybe I'll also want to make the profile photo a little bit larger. Maybe I'll shift it in a little bit and I'll just really start tweaking some of these elements so that they look pretty fancy and they look really nice. There we go, right? So we essentially have our default state and we have our expanded state. Now there, there are a few problems that we're gonna to get to in just a moment, but now that we have those two states created, the big question is how do we wire this up? So what we're gonna do from our default state, we are going to hop into prototype mode and you're gonna notice when you have that component selected, you have a blue handle over to the right, you can simply click on it. Of course, if you are working with multiple artboards, you can drag that handle to another artboard or if you're working with anchor links, you can drag it to a layer on that that particular artboard. But because we wanna work with components, we just clicked on it just like that. And inside of the properties, we do want a tap trigger because that's what we wanna do. And we're gonna choose auto animate for the action. That way, all those elements that we kind of moved around and shifted animate really nicely. And now we can choose our destination. Again, you could choose additional artboards down here at the bottom, but I'm going to choose the expanded state that we just created. And now we can also work on our easing options. Usually ease in and out is pretty good. If you wanna get a little bit fancy, you can go with snap. I wouldn't recommend wind up or bounce. Those have its place, but very rarely would you use those. So ease in and out is pretty good. I'm gonna go for let's say 0.6 seconds, so it's not too slow, but also not too fast. And there we go. And here's the expanded state. If we want to get back to it, we'll get to that in a second. So from our default state, we're gonna go ahead and press the play button at the top. We've got our lovely dashboard that we've been building out. We can press on view post, it goes down to the bottom, and then we can tap on the story to expand, right? Now, of course, you know, it's taking up a lot of room. So there's a lot of different things you can do to, you know, alter this. If you wanted to, you can hop into your second state one more time and you can make some changes because this is very large. So what you can do is you can go to the mask, choose the image, for example, make this a little bit smaller, maybe move it up just like this and just kind of rearrange some of these elements one more time just so it doesn't take up too much room on your dashboard, right? but hopefully you're starting to see how things were working, right? Let's make this a little bit smaller and how all those masks really helped hide some of those elements. So, go to default state. Let's go down to view posts and that's a little bit better. Now, of course, we have a problem, right? There's a lot going on on this artboard. You know, we have, we have these elements in the background, these posts that we, we can very clearly see. We have this navigation bar. We have the activity section on the right. All, all of these elements are very distracting. And what I might wanna do actually, just so things line up, I'm gonna go back to design mode, expand it. I'm gonna grab all these elements one more time and just shift them over. So they kind of line up with the left side, right? I'm just being very picky right now, but again, click, there's the story. But we have that problem, right? Where there's, you know what, there you know, might be something else we can do. Maybe I'll get to that later. I'm just think, brainstorming out loud some interesting ideas. But anyways, yeah, we have all these elements, right? We may want to hide them or darken the background or blur the background, something to that extent. So what we can do is we can go into our expanded state and even though this does not exist in the default state, we can still add some sort of a background to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my rectangle and I'll just draw out a rectangle across the entire artboard, just like this. Now, of course, because the mask is confined to the particular, let me drag this all the way down, move it down in my, whoops, what am I doing? Where did it go? There we go. I'm gonna drag this, move this down, I'm just using my command or control and then the square brackets to move it back in the layer stack. Now, because the mask is confined and kind of fits around that image, all I can do now is just grab the mask and make sure it covers the entire artboard. 
right? Just like that. Now, this image in the background that we're gonna use to kind of mask or hide everything should be probably on, on the darker side. And we have two options now. We can either just drop the opacity just like this, right? Or what we can do, oh, there's the, um, let me just make sure to move the story right there, perfect, okay. Or what we can do, if we wanna get really fancy, is we can turn on background blur, right? So I'm gonna turn background blur on, that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna drop the blur a little bit. I'm gonna drop the, um, what's this called? The brightness, that's what it is. And maybe bump up the opacity just a little bit. So we just want a fairly subtle background blur, something like that, right? But just enough that it makes the story kind of pop a little bit. Now, once that's done, what we could do is we could now center this one more time, right? Just like that, perfect. Okay, so how's this looking? Let's go ahead and find out. I'm gonna press the play button at the top one more time. We can scroll down to view posts and we can tap and there we go. Now, of course, we might wanna you know, dive in here and make some very small tweaks to the expanded state. Grab this image in the background, right? The mask and the image and make sure that it covers this section up here as well. So default state, one more time, whoop, and expands, right? There we go. Now, there was a little bit of a lag because the background blur is rendering in real time. So if we wanted to make sure that it was really silky smooth, back to the expanded state, I'm going to grab that layer. Let's turn off the background blur and just decrease the opacity just a little bit. To about somewhere 80%, that looks pretty good, right? And one more time, whoop, there we go. And now we can very nicely see that story. Now, we do have a few more minutes. So the idea that I was thinking about is what if there was a preview of the other stories as well when you're when you're looking at them, right? So in the expanded state, what we can do, let me go ahead and one more time move this over. Let me grab some of these elements. I'm gonna move this over to mask it. And what I can do is grab the image, duplicate this over here. Maybe I'll drop the opacity a touch, right? I can also grab an Im another image to pop this into place. Let's say this image here, right? And drop the opacity a little bit. So that'll be the second image of this particular story. You don't want to go too far down because then you won't be able to see much. <laughs> Stephanie's saying, now we have a voop inside of a beside boop, indeed. So let's go for, I don't know, let's say 75%, right? So now let's do this one more time. There we go. And now we have another image over here to the right. So now we're starting to get a little bit fancy. We're adding additional elements inside of our expanded state that kind of come into play. And, you know, possibly from here, you can create an additional state, right? Watch this. So I can go into my expanded state, create an additional state. This will be, let's say card or maybe story two. Story two, right? I can dive in here. I can grab these elements. Maybe I can just, maybe maybe just this one, right? Move that over to the side. Move this over here. Make sure all that lines up really nicely, right? Now from within prototype mode, we're gonna select the expanded state. We can click on this card here and we can take that to story number two. We'll make sure to ease in and out. We'll go a little bit faster for this one. And then from Story two, if we wanna go back to that one, we can just do that, right? So let's take one more look at this before we wrap things up. Back to the default state, we're gonna press play. Uh, Cars is saying maybe you can add an arrow. Absolutely, I would encourage you to get creative and add arrows, add lots of things. Maybe you can add, I don't know, voice playback and stuff like that. Uh, view posts, here's the expanded state. I can now tap on the second card. It moves over to view the second story. I can tap on the first to view the first one, right? And of course, you can always go back, go to the expanded state. Maybe you can click, actually, maybe you can click on this background layer and that will go back to the default state. So one more time. Whoop, 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 and whoop. There we go. All right, that will just about do it. Masks and auto animate in Adobe XD 
to create stories or previews of whatever it might be. Again, I encourage you all to get super creative with some stuff in your dashboards. I'm excited to take a look at some of those later today. And you know, tomorrow is the last day of these challenges, but Jesse will be back next week, kicking off another round. So thanks again, everyone. Drew and Cars and RB and Akin and Stephanie. And uh, who else do we have in here? A lot of chatting going on. Denise and everyone else joining me. Thanks again. And I will see you all tomorrow.